Zachy, welcome. Thank you, Mike, for this opportunity. I really, um, I was looking forward to this. Excellent. I haven't seen you in forever since we were uh, out doing work together in San Francisco. You know, this is one of the benefits of this uh, self shelter thing. Like, you sit down and then you, you start, like, remembering very small moments in life and they became all of a sudden, like, a, like great memories. And then you will dig to... Remember, like, people who you've been with, and then you lost touch. This is one of the things I like. It's, like, one of the small positive things uh, this, like, pandemic brought to us. Absolutely. So it's been a very positive experience for you. Yeah, yeah I can I can pretty much say it's been more positive than negative because I have something called... I, I, can, I kind of, like, tend to... Uh, entertain the idea of like uh, selective ignorance so you select things you don't want to pay attention to you know like they draw you like a magnet but you you already made the decision that you're not going to pay attention to that thing and you're going to be in control of your attention because your attention is everything and if you allow yourself to just pick up anything around you especially now because we don't have anything like we just have a tv and internet right yeah so this is two sources you will try to use to cope with this self and shelter right yeah you don't you don't you don't, you don't tend to call someone talk to them for an hour you probably did that the first five days then oh it's a, i can talk to you in my <laughs> life all right <laughs> who i'm gonna talk to you so and then you you turn to this like entertainment like TV and internet. And then these things is just like sometimes let's say there is a good content on these two sources, but there is also the kind of content that will toxic your own thoughts. Yes. It, it will start shifting, programming you like in the subconscious. Yeah. Which is I don't use the TV uh, after the third day, I think. Uh, after the pandemic. Actually, this TV was over there and it was closing uh, that door and the TV was blocking the door and this old space, I, I made it like in my gym. Yeah. It's like, like, it's like you see all these water drugs. Yeah. So it's like my new gym here and then I, I didn't use the TV anymore. So, um, until like, you, you told me that you're coming here so I have to, because I live by myself here, so I have to push the TV sure. a little bit. So, yeah. so you let you in. This is my door. Okay. I, you know, I, I believe I had been here once before. I think when we went on break from shooting in Oakland, I think we were playing, oh. playing police officers in yeah. some Chinese or Japanese story. Oh, you know what? We've been in the Hugh Laurie TV yeah, show. Yeah, that too. Yeah. And then yep. you gave me a ride. And mm. then you, you wanted to come, uh, like you, you want to use the restaurant, I thought. Like, and then you came here like, yeah, I, I just remember that. Yep. Yeah. So I, you know, and I remember that too, because, uh, I don't know, we just hit it off, you know, like just sort of the same energy, just kind of hanging back and enjoying the decision we made to be here. Yeah. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. 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 And and we didn't want to be celebrities. We just wanted to make easy money. You you know, like, you remember like he already was like sitting next to us and he was looking at us like, and we were like talking and laughing and he was like, who are these people? I'm famous here. Like, look at me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's gotta be strange, you know, to be something that sought after and then try to be normal in front of everybody. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you're going to be weird to a lot of people because you live a, weird, a very different yeah. life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a good experience for me when I started um, doing acting. It was like I tried to um, uh, embody some of the characters or like uh, it's like a way of expression. 
you know, like you try to embody some characters that you always been wondering about. Yeah. Uh, and then it's, it gives you like perspective how to deal with yeah. them eventually. Yeah, totally. Because you understand, like you, yeah. you are in their shoes now. Yeah. And you you kind of like realize how the way they are thinking. Yeah. You like, just yeah the empathy factor is the art of the the good actors. You know what I mean? Like if they can sink into that that energy and occupy the space with it with their imagination and go where they want to go you know as if you're locked in a room by yourself i think i think that's why the voice acting thing you know we kind of talked about that earlier but i think in voice acting you can literally isolate your characterization of an energy and i think that's like that's one of those things that either you're tuned into or you're not yeah you know what i mean that's why people they don't like acting they don't think they can do acting because they don't think that way they're they're already playing a part correct you know uh, and and you don't know it until you try it like you you don't you, you don't know what how is it's really gonna be like yeah. you only have your imagination until yeah. you actually done it and then try it yeah and then true, fail, fail. it's humbling you, yeah yeah you know, just yeah jump in and because it's something appealing to you you want to try it and you you, you love doing that definitely you have the energy to cope with the first tiny failures to get through yeah and then eventually you will succeed yeah yeah you got to be willing to go through some of the pain deliberately you know and and that's that kind of brings me to what you do professionally you know as far as fitness goes you tap into that and then you're sort of like like the mechanic you know like a body shop for the human body i used to be a mechanic that's why people they don't know oh, wow. that like i don't mention that yeah uh, interesting lot because it's it's always to me it's always like i want to focus more i don't want to distract people who uh uh come to me for help because it's not about me or like how i became like this i want to make the subject about who are you? What you can learn about yourself? Or what you can do? So that's why I don't tell stories about myself a lot. I, I'm not... It, there is no such a thing like Anna, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, make an example. I, I'm not... I'm, I can't make an example for you. Like, you live in a different life than me. Yeah. Yes, we're a human being, but your experiences, your life, your family, your environment are, are different. What you can do is to start uh, using those experiences to build uh, what you're trying to accomplish. Because I can tell you I've been mechanic and I went through that and went through this. And yes, it's like a moral story. It looks good. It's like, you know, sure. I can connect with people with, but it's an experience. It's an individualized experience. You, you don't have to go through being a mechanic and get hurt. And, and and to be like fit so that's why in the back of your head your head was tells you this guy is fit because he has been doing that and that's what the problem how did I get to do that like you know it's not realistic you know like, yeah. it's like, it's like the, the mind always try to find excuses or like a way out to not do the hard yeah. things yeah. and this is one of the things people struggling with when they hear uh, gurus or like uh, or like athletes, they will they will look at their stories like it's impossible. Yes, yeah. it's not impossible. It's not. It's they're not. You you are picturing yourself like outliner. Mm-hmm. Like you you can you cannot go through their story. You can be with the same result going through your true story, because everyone has their own struggle. They can grow from. Yeah. So your struggle is not any less than that like I did struggle. It's like the same struggle. Sure, sure. But the outcome will be the same if you focus on your own. You don't focus on theirs. Right? Yes. It's like just this like shiny like a like a, a red shiny uh, ball syndrome. Like you always try to make a beautiful story or like you know yeah try to picture yourself doing something like going through like mountains and oceans and then you know to get to where you know like yeah. with your tiny little struggles <laughs> you can get fit 
you can get fit because because here is the thing about when, when one of the one of the things people ask me most is like how do I get motivation, right? I know this is like not the order of the the sequence of information, mm -hmm. but it's it, it led us to this point. Sure. Like when you when you talk about motivation, mm -hmm. you say like what what motivates you to work out? Yeah. Yes. Like that's a deep question to ask yourself. Like for example, you you tell me, okay, I I woke up today, and the first thing I did is go to the bathroom and then brush my teeth. I'll ask you, what motivate what motivated you to wake up? Why mot what motivated you to brush your teeth? What was the motivation? Answer me. Good hygiene. Good hygiene, and what else? Uh, you wake up well, you know what? Uh, if if it's you know a, a question, I can answer in some short length. But okay. uh, my life does motivate me. It's hard to simplify what one specific thing, but to get up and brush my teeth is part of a routine. And if if I commit to a routine, that that leads to other commitments, and so that motivates me yeah. is the idea of accomplishment. How, how did you learn to commit to that? Like, how did you build that kind of habit brushing your teeth every day? Uh, being around other people who were hygienically focused. People who minded their environment, minded their body, minded their self-care. Um, and people who are consistent. And not for my benefit, but for their own. And just by that example, I then start feeling sort of obligated to emulate that energy because it means something to them and I want to mean something to them. And so my motivations come from my relationships and I had at some point had to realize what was giving me what in terms of who I'm relating to. And when I kind of dusted the shelves off, I found I found the, the ones that matter the most. And uh, yeah, it all became about digging into who I am to myself and possibly to other people that's a good point because uh, every good habit and like more like sustainable habit starts with this kind of mindset about you thinking about how these things will uh, affect you as a person and then affect the rest of your life right yes and then it will be uh, automatically like you something you do uh, are different like mm -hmm. you don't think you don't wait for motivation you don't you don't wait for inspiration. You just wake up and do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's exactly how you get fit. Yes. And that's what everyone is missing right now. Yeah. And and everyone is like, no, I don't want to take this road. You will take this road and you will waste a lot like time and energy or on trying the shortcut, on trying the BS. Yeah. Uh, uh, you you get them from the internet. Yeah, yeah. Motivation will work only after you take action. Yeah, momentum. It's it's only the way you you perceive in it. Like the the the, the main thing you wanted to do to deal with that is you 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 start thinking. Is it? How do I get motivation? You change you change that question into like. Why I always look for motivation to do things that I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. I need this thing. Like, yeah. Why? Where this resistance coming from? Like, is it something uh, I have to deal with and I have to still look for motivation to work out, or is it something I need to address? Yeah. Like you by changing your perception about how do you look at motivation. And how that question by itself it's problematic for yeah. you. Yeah. You start building building what's so called self discipline. Yeah. It's not you have to go through like the Marines or like a Navy SEAL right. to develop. You can that. be an athlete is what you're saying. You can have the athleticism. You, you can have the self the self discipline yeah. enough yeah. to take the first step. Yep. So you can you can have a result which will eventually push you furthermore so you can have the body, the health you always wanted. 
And and more importantly, if I might add, because our mind is a huge component of our biological body in terms of what it does and and the condition of it means something. And any person living in modern society is, is projecting towards the future, I would assume. I mean, we're all building towards some some life that we imagine for ourselves, right? Whether whether we're trying to attain personal physical goals or financial goals, we're all pursuing something, right? Meaning of some sort. And when we cloud our mind with others' perception of what their pursuit is, and we try to align ourselves without understanding what's happening inside of us, we try to, uh, because I've thought about this, you know, as far as gurus go, it's such a bad word, I think, at this point for me, because it's like they don't know anything that I couldn't know myself. However, they do, they, if you're trying to be kind to yourself and not just cut yourself off from this addiction, because that's what a lot of us are doing is we just we're like stuck to it. Right. Yeah. It's not necessarily anybody's fault. But if you become aware of it and you start to practice self-discipline in the smallest ways, in the smallest ways, you try to commit to some sort of self-discipline and your journey to this decision making strength is your own but if you can get to that point where you can make a better decision in some minute moment of your life so that it betters you start there and then build from there what else can i do what else can i change and eventually you're drinking more water eventually you're stretching every day eventually you're challenging yourself physically to breathe deeper you're challenging you're challenging yourself to breathe better to stop and breathe and and think and wait and hear your body creak hear the arthritis ask you to slow it down and if you can tap into that the world is yours that is the real wealth that's the real wealth when when and fitness is a term that you can use to say the outside me but that fitness what the meaning of it is also mental fitness you know and i think i'm making it cheesy at this point but i mm, that's, a, that's a very good point like you just hit the nail. It's a fitness. It's a, m- a mental fitness. You are shaping your mind. The body is a, is a byproduct of your shaping your mind. It's not about reps. And that's why I'm learning more and more. It's never about nutrition. It's never about exercise. It's all about your shaping your mind. You're getting your mind in shape, not your body. Your body is a slave. With, with lifting weights, heavy weights, you're challenging your mind. You're challenging your body, but you're challenging, challenging your mind more. You're fighting the resistance. I, I, I mentioned earlier when I talked about motivation. You challenge that, that resistance in the face. Like you're yeah. saying I'm standing here yep. and doing whatever you, you, you ask me to sit down and do just like a wall and watch TV. I'm, I'm doing exactly the opposite and it's very uncomfortable and I hate it but I'm doing it like that's the language you use with resistance you don't use the language like okay so you know what uh, I'm gonna lift weights but I'm gonna reward you after that I'm gonna reward you with a big sandwich because I owned it now the resistance is taking kind of like a tricky road yeah. to you. Yes, yes. To, to drag you back toward being lazy, being healthy. Yep. Uh, this is called the moral licensing. Like you do a workout and then you feel very entitled to like yes. indulge. Yes. And then it's like, oh, you know, let's take it easy now because you did that. And yeah. It's really work- it's, it's like, that's, that's a new strategy for your resistance. How, how eventually you will say... It will show you that working out is not worth it because you're the same. You're working out and you're the same. And it's then draw you back to your old habits. That's that's the new way. Right? Yep. You should be following up with with your new mindset. Yep. And you always kind of like put it in action. Because it's a lifelong 
decision is yeah. what you're really trying to do is like, I don't ever want to feel less than again. I don't ever want to not be living in some potential of mine that I'm aware of ever again. And so that means when you come to that, that realization that you want to take control, it can't be, you can't hesitate. You, you can't hesitate. And like, I, I hesitated to, to give you a straight answer of, you know, when I was trying to explain how I got here is I'm a little fearful that, that something's going to hit. Something's going to happen. Maybe this is just paranoia to keep me safe from moving too fast or doing too much or overwhelming my body so that I can't do it for a couple weeks. And then I'm subject to behavior of depression and falling behind. And so this is where the mental fitness plays a part because we, people get injured, right? Shit happens all the time. We talked about truck drivers and how yeah. this issue is highly relatable to them. And I'll, and I'll have something else to add to that. But uh, when you're ready to make the decision, you're, you're at a point where you're willing to Comp you're willing to compromise with your historical self. You said you, when you go up against the mirror and you got to look that thing in the face and you don't back down, right? That's the hero's journey. And so you are going to have your, your Hollywood movie in your head if you follow through, if you get that discipline, if you don't try to just see the best scenes in the movie, but be there for the sweat falling off your face and your clothes stinking up your closet and all the little things that come along with working out all the time. Your car kind of stinks. Who gives a shit? You feel amazing. And eventually you'll get the car cleaned up because it's part of the routine. Eventually your bed's made every day. Eventually you have learned what is ancient old practice in other parts of the world. This is the, the wonderful thing about, about being an American is that we love new ideas. We just yearn for them. We got here and we're like, what else is next? Who else is, come on, what, what you got? What kind of idea you got? Oh, you want to put a drugstore over there? Hell yeah, I need drugs. Everybody needs drugs. And we just go and we feed into this like compulsion to make new. And we forget that all that old shit we used to do, like go outside and exercise, that shit is the most important. Any story that's shared in, in deep philosophies in all cultures all relate to well-being and self-perspective. And there's no denying that no matter how far out you go in any one of these trendy little thoughts you have and videos you follow, no matter how far you go, that wisdom has always been in you. And if you need help, this is the other thing I need to mention real quick, I, I, and I'm sorry to like take this chunk of time, but if somebody needs help, because I, I hate that when you say you just got to do it, what if you can't? What if you're, what if you're feeling disabled? Not that you are disabled because we've seen every brand of human from every horrible circumstance come out on top somewhere in the process. So we know we have potential. Don't, it don't matter how bad you, you could have had no parents. You grew up by yourself on an Island you could still turn out pretty fucking good. It's the fortitude that you, you know, with the consciousness. And, you know, it gets tricky when you start talking about this stuff. But if you are some self-aware in your body, you can become better. And I think that that's important for truck drivers to hear or people on the road to hear is that, you know, you don't give in to that entitlement. Don't go get the sandwich. Get the sandwich meat. Just get the meat. Get the cheese if you want. Get a slice of cheese. You're all right with some cheese. If you can get the best kind of cheese, get the best kind of cheese. You know, little pieces. Eat what you can till you're full. Don't feel bad. Try to get a little bit of fruit every once in a while. And try to see what it is that's pulling you beside your appetite. I'm, I'm glad you uh, brought this point now because I, uh, uh, as I told you, my father, he used to be a truck driver, and he used, he has, he still, he still do, he has like, for him, he's like 60 something right now, and it's, uh, it's kind of like, let's say not late, but in stage when it's so hard to reverse uh, all the, he has like a, a bad knees, but uh, back pain, he has like three surgeries, back pain, he has a shoulder sh uh, uh, surgery, he has, uh, he used to have uh, all kind of 
uh, we call them like metabolic syndrome. It's like when you have when you have you are like uh, a pre diabetic, mm -hmm. you are pre uh, hyper uh, tensive. Like y y you are like um, on the edge of getting this notorious uh, diseases. Like you are on, on one step away. Like you are one hamburger away from getting yeah, yeah. diabetes. Yeah. So he. I, this is how I started like uh, my fitness when I realized that uh, if I don't do something I will be like that mm -hmm. but actually I was wrong at, the, at that point but at least it got me started because it was for me like a, 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 like a, a red flag yeah telling me like yeah. you gotta get your shit together yeah so he, 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 he didn't use to exercise. He uh, didn't used to eat healthy. Like most car, like truck drivers, they tend to indulge on mm -hmm. themselves. Convenience. Food. Sometimes a beer, sometimes, you know, yep. Yep. some chocolate, um, which is going to add up eventually to get like the, the belly bigger. And then uh, we'll get, get them less energy. Mm -hmm. More with, stress. With less energy. That's why you ask me, like, how, how do I don't feel strong enough to, to, to fight that resistance? To stand up for that uh, lazy me? You don't have energy. You, you, all your energy got sucked uh, uh, trying to keep what's important fueled. You're not... You're not nurturing your body right. Like you're not getting enough nutrition that will support even your brain function. Yeah, that's how deep yeah. it is. Which it's all, it's not about like the mind is not that, like a cloud that separate from the body. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the same unit. Right. The mind, your thoughts is it's like it's like some uh, uh, chemical reactions in your in your brain. Yep. It's, it's not a cloud or like a like a hard drive separate. From your body, your mind gets the needed material. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Your nutrition. It translates why, in your mood. Yeah, yeah. Like that's why people they missing this point. Yeah. Like, there is something called uh, amino acid therapy. I don't know if you heard of that. No. So when you don't take, let's say, like when you feel rewarded, you feel good. That's mm -hmm. coming from dopamine. Mm -hmm. And it's derived from uh, something uh, called uh, tyrosine. It's like amino acid. That's like the feel good feeling. Okay. If you don't have that in your nutrition, how can can you imagine how will you feel rewarded when you do something good like eating healthy or exercising or seeing a result? Yeah. You will you will not feel that. Yeah. And then you get sucked in back into your old habits right it's a deficit it's a deficit of confidence yeah mm -hmm. and then and then the, the the tricky point is like your body learn and unlearn things yes so if you don't have this nutrition in your food for a long time your body will shut down yeah the mechanisms yeah that will translate this nutrition into dopamine or like uh, make tyrosine from proteins yeah yeah etc yeah and then even when you take that afterwards, it will take us some time to actually your body start producing these things. I, I hope I'm making a clear point here because this is this is not a woo-woo or like I'm I'm talking about something that's it's it's it's, it's in your uh, physiology science. Yeah, it's yeah. like the the the, the uh, psychology and uh, physiology they have a link. Yes. Yes. And this is the link. Mind body connection, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you need to well, Can I can I inject yeah. something? Working out is painful. There is suffering, self-induced suffering. But I think when when we're trying to understand what we're vocalizing about things, like why am I in this mood? Why am I pissed off? Why am I irritable? It's stemming from something. And if if you can Stop and ask yourself that question reasonably, not with your anger, just inside. Say, what do you need? What simple thing? Because when, you, when a person needs help and they ask, 
you know, I need, I need help. Well, what's wrong? I, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. First thing the other person tries to do is, well, what, what can we do right now? What is the little thing we can do right now? We can put it into a bite size. And I think that we live in a world where we, tr we everything happens at once and it's in our face. And it's like, okay, that's happening. I don't need to know anymore. That's happening. I and we're just fumbling around in, in this jungle of human people, right? But the earth, the planet tells us things about life. Earthquakes happen. Uh, volcanoes erupt. Uh, tidal waves come in and wipe out entire towns. Like we live in a volatile planet. And we're worried about the next big screen TV we can buy. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong, okay? But, but I'm saying that we have a tendency to s try to simplify a very complex world. And when we try to do that, and we don't listen to what our, our moods are telling us, we find ourselves deeper and deeper in a deficit of confidence because we've been making all these rash decisions on materials. But... You're talking about the chemistry and the payoff, the dopamine. There's addiction in this scenario with everybody. But what is that? That's the thing I aim to learn from fitness is how does this, where do you tap right into addiction and kick it in the fucking face? Pardon my French, but how, how do you, you know, because it, it, it takes you for a ride. It's a virus in your system. The, 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 this is a very good question. And I think, personally, the only way to defeat addiction is to replace it with, a, with another addiction. Don't get me wrong. I like this. No, I, li I know what you're saying. Don't Go ahead, please. Wrong. When you have addiction, it means like your brain is like rushing, working on uh, like a hard drive on a uh, rewarding system. And for you to stop that, you want, it's kind of like so tricky for you to try to deal with addiction with try to push it kind of like pu uh, push it away or just like you see like, okay, I'm eating unhealthy five meals a day and that's an addiction for like 10 years. I'm going to start with eating just four, right? Mm -hmm. And then eating just three. So this, the problem with this strategy is you're still in the same addiction frame. You're still in the same food and healthy food frame, right? Yes. It's better. This is more, far, this is not, this is not science. So just to make this clear, this is not science. This is my own experience awesome. working with people yeah. with this kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So I'm not claiming this is a science or true. I'm sharing my own experience. It might work for you and it might not. All right. Yeah. So creating a new system, a new, creating a new reward system in the same brain will help you shift from the, the first addiction to the new one. Right? Yeah. And I found that there is out there a good kind of addictions. I have one. It's called lifting weights. And it makes me feel good. And it makes me stronger. Make me fit. Make me happy. People ask me, like, any kind of question. How do I get better sleep? How do I get a six pack? How do I get better sex? My answer is always the same. Do deadlifts. <laughs> I made even t-shirts about that. That's amazing. I made even t-shirts about that. I like, love it. That's like why why it came out out of like all my years training people, working with all like ethnicities and all uh, age uh, ranges, women, men. I just came out with this result when when you change your body in a good way with weightlifting it rewards you by making you feel good it tells you I like this and it always uh, it also tells you like this when you eat a hamburger but the difference is when you lift weights 
you feel good longer and more in a more sustainable way mm -hmm. than the the 10 minutes you spend eating hamburger you see the difference absolutely but it's still it's still addiction it's a good addiction mm -hmm. like you created just create something you very excited to to try every day you're very excited to yeah. work up and do it's like you know and it makes your life better i like right? i like that yeah so you switch it from addiction because fighting an addiction you addiction is like you const you constructed uh, something in your brain that's like the constructor of your brain now it's changed the chemistry of your brain is changed yes to change that it's, it's th it takes long time. Yes. You see, like the, all these celebrities, they have like addiction. Yeah. And they like went away somewhere for like a year. Yeah. And then even though like they still having an addiction, but they don't they don't come out. They say, oh, I'm still addicted. Like you know, like they will have like a, a concert. Yeah. After one year, and yeah. then they still addiction. They just learn how to deal with it. Yeah. They just learn how to uh, mask it with mm -hmm. something with yeah. with performance, but it's still there. It will never go away yeah. until you replace it with something else, right? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, yeah, I, I replaced addiction to uh, this is I never shared before. Just to make clear, okay. I I, I used to uh, uh, smoke. Uh, it's not weed, but it's kind of like more. It's more potent than weed. It's like really addictive. Uh, they call it in Europe cannabis. So yeah. I, 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 I used to, to, I started like this. I started like not being able to sleep. And then, and then like, uh, I'm going to try everything. I need to sleep. I yeah. Need to wake up. Yeah. And then I started smoking this. It made me like sleep. And then it made me feel good too. But uh, I wake up like sh shit, but it made me good sleep. And then I started smoking it during the day. And it became addiction, and it's, I, I I can't talk to people anymore if I don't smoke some, right? And it made it made me like feel good in a, in a weird way and so weak, and uh, eventually like it became addiction. So when I when I started fighting that or like oh I'm gonna cut down on that I'm gonna let's say like smoke less, it never happened that I quit the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I never did. Well, let me until until I actually like shifted into a new kind of uh, mode of being. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you on behalf of a truck driver perspective. You know, you said you you live alone, right? Yeah. And you don't have kids. I assume. I, I don't, it's a little bit of a personal question, but if you're only taking care of you, and I've been in a scenario where it's just been me, I proudly can say that I took that opportunity to, to shift some things. But in a truck driver's world, let's say he's gone down a bad road nutritionally for a long time and it's panning out in his physical sense. You know, to assume the, the characters of your life, whether with your partner, your love partner, your, your children, your grandparents, your parents, whoever's in your life, and if those if those relationships are taking more than you can give, then that's a, a pretty good sign that you've got to simplify things. And this is where it gets difficult because we feel tied to each other sometimes. We're so invested. And what we've done is we've, you know, effectively put our love for ourselves in other people. And it's easy to justify your pain by saying that to yourself. I, I am responsible for the, I can't not be there. I can't get a workout in. And you find reasons to get away from it. But, you know, to make it practical, and I have been experimenting with this. Uh, your videos, and I have to say this, I, I forgot to say it earlier, but I personally love the style of video you do where there's no dialogue. And I don't know, you know, the reason behind it. I could speculate whatever, but it has become the most sought after style of video that I look for because I don't want to pollute the air with the noise. Nine times out of 10, it's marketing. I don't need to hear it anymore. And that's what I love about your material is that you're here to share the 
the golden information, you know, and I, I want to just say that for truck drivers, if you're trying to chunk it down, watch, watch the fitness videos, but turn the sound off, play some music, watch them move their body and, and look at the form, look at the speed, see how old they are. You know, check in with your stats, your physical stats. What shape are you in? Look for those type of people doing videos to help you get better slowly but surely. And and I think it's really easy for us, and especially truck drivers, to to speed things up. We ain't got time. We got to go. We're always on the go. Can't stick around. And when you live in that mode, you, you tend to take it home with you. Let me try not to, but you do. And if you're not aware of this cycle in your life, it's very hard to simplify your health because you're too spread out. And it's not your fault. It's life. It happens. It's happened for centuries. Kings and queens and all those people, they get overwhelmed. They get pissed off. They hurt somebody. Everybody goes through it. You know what I mean? So you don't have to feel guilty on behalf of me. Like I made some shitty, shitty decisions before that hurt many, many people, including myself. But, you know, if you can commit to treating yourself better, you can commit to a small change some small change walk to the car this time or you know don't mind that you have to do a little extra work at this stop all of a sudden they ask you to do a favor don't mind it get your exercise stretch pick that up correctly use your back use your muscles for once be careful careful everybody tells you to be careful but we just oh yeah okay yeah, no problem then we drive like a bat out of hell like if that's what you're doing you know, in the majority of your decisions, then slow down. Just slow down. Stop. Stop for a second. Breathe. Stop the truck. Don't start it yet. You just got back in. Stop. Stop, stop the truck and then walk out. Do like bodyweight squats. This is what I've been doing, Zachy. I want to share this Do with some you. Lunges. I'll tell you something. Yeah. That you, may, you may think like, wow, this is... Uh, because... I, I like to experiment a lot. Yes. Like that's my you know addiction. I like to try stuff. Yeah. I try like to make gadgets, try to make you know. So when you sit in on a track for let's say like two hours, there is a lot of like a physiological like uh, activities in your body. Some of them they're like so hurtful and they're building up. Mm-hmm. One of them is when you sit on your, it's like, it's like we're sitting here on the chair, right? When you sit on your, on your, uh, let's say, how do you call this? Glutes. On your rear, yeah, yeah. Yes, let's say glutes. It's like okay. just the anatomical name. When you sit on that, it means like your blood flow would be squeezed in that area, like in your glutes. There would be, it would be less blood flow, right? Yeah. When you have a less blood flow in that area, can you imagine what can happen? But you weaken your body weakens. You know that area is very, very important. Absolutely, yeah. Especially for men. Yeah. You know I'm going with this. Yeah. One of the things is you weakens your glutes. Your glutes muscle get weaker. When you have back pain from driving, it's not happening while you're driving. It's happening after you, you already like parked your car and you walked out. Yeah. Why? Because when you sit on your, on your glutes for a long time and then you, 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 you deprive them from blood flow, the muscle bill itself stop, stop, stops uh, functioning. Whenever you need your glutes for any movement in life, you will use your lower back instead. Let's say like... You walked out the car, Damn. and then you you bent forward to pick up something, and, and that motion it's called the uh, it's called the hip flexion, and then to stand up again you need your glute muscle to stand up again because they're like the prime movers for hip. If you don't, if your glutes are not functioning right, guess what? That's so your beautiful. Bo- your, your body will find a way. Yeah, I needed it that. Always do. I needed that. So. So your body will use the closest muscle to cope with uh, your glute dysfunction. You know what? I, you, I just never think of my ass as a like a bicep. Yeah, because you, you think of the ass as a, as a but 
it's, it's, it's like it's like a very common thing when you think about the S. Yeah. It's like a more of a sexual taboo. Huh? taboo. You, your mind tends to shy away from it because yeah. it's not appropriate. Yeah. 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 So it's like always like S means like uh, sex, plus, uh, sex. Yeah. Uh, Kim Kardashian. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, All that marketing is yeah, flooding your... Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, actually, the butt, it's very important for... It's an it's, it's, uh, it's anti-aging uh, Amazing. component you can use to, to keep your posture upright. Okay. And you were going to recommend lunch. Go ahead. Say what yeah, you want to so, say. So, so, this is one point why you have back pain. This is how I get to help my father and people with back pain. With, uh, with exercises I do. It's like one of them, hip thrust, uh, strengthening the glutes, uh, working on that area. So you, whenever you, you do in life, uh, you would use your glutes rather than your lower back. Your lower back muscles are very tiny compared to glutes, and they're meant to hold the spine together. They didn't mean to uh, then strengthen you up when you bend forward. Wow. It's, it's your glutes. No idea. Bending. This is one point with back pain. So, and that will lead us to knee pain because it's a shame. It's like whenever you, you find yourself compensating because of compensation, you do something that the, the body has to use the closest muscle. Yeah. The proximal muscle. Yeah. To do that movement. The body doesn't tell you, hey, you don't have some glutes, you cannot wake up or like stand up. The body always has its way, and you're always compensating. Is it, is it, is it your, the cost. Is it your glutes getting you out of bed? Is that the main component when you're no, trying no, to get when up? You, when you bend forward to pick up something. Oh, okay. So when you get out of the bed, yeah. you're using your hip flexors. It's like that's, different, that's different. Gotcha, okay. But it's very important to wake up in a bed. It's great that you mentioned that. And it, there is a way how to keep, wake up on a bed. And there's a good way. And there's for your posture. Way, especially for those with back pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you later how, how, how that works. Oh, man. So you, you want to... You You're about to up, save my life. <laughs> you you want to... You, let's, let's, uh, let's make less pain first. Like, decrease the pain. Yeah. These people often, Smart, yeah. So they can at least start exercising. Because that's yeah. the, the most... The biggest part of when, when someone are like, I want to do squats. And they said, I can't lift these things, man. Like, my back hurts. Yeah, did you ask why your back hurts? Yes, because I'm sitting for like five hours in a row. No, it's not because you're... It's, it's just because you're sitting around, but it's not about that kind of like hunching over inside your car. Yeah. It's about what you do after that. Yeah, yeah. All right? Because yeah. when you sit and you actually like... So it's just like upper body, right? Yeah. You're bending like that, yes, but it's just upper body. Why did you use that pillow that keeps your... Yeah. The curve on that? Shit, so I just bought one from Costco. That's, that's not going to fix your problem. What's going to fix I love your it. problem Makes is, sense. is understanding what's really going on and yeah, then yeah. do the right thing, oh, which man. is exercising. Eating my own words right now. So <laughs> that's one thing. Yeah. The second thing I want to mention, because we, we want to uh, make like the, the full explanation, especially for drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know it's a very common thing, back pain and knee pain and then belly fat. So we will address this, and we will see like how they like all relate to each other. Hell yeah! Can so, can yeah. I ask for some water? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oops. All right. So yeah, you can use this one. You, you have to know that this 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 moment, given by God, is a miracle. I'm I'm very glad that you gave me this opportunity because I wanna I wanna kind of like help this particular because. Everyone is like obsessed right now with like six packs, yeah. and then uh, right. it's there. But these people, like they, they, they like the the silent majority. They see themselves so far away from being yeah. fit, yeah. which is not true. Yeah. They see themselves like unable to change, which is not true. Like you are able to change, even like. You have bad knees, bad back, and you're like 70 years old. Your body is an amazing machine. That's why I discover it. That's why I'm like have a passion about this because the body has amazing abilities. Yeah, yeah. If you believe in them, it will get you wherever you want. You, you're effectively like, a scientist. You know that, right? Because <laughs> that's what I, you're I doing. I don't call myself scientist, but I'm just. Uh, but you're you're in a lab, you know, creating 
just amazingness. Yes, anyways, so, I'm just blown away. So, anyways, so, let's get. So, getting back to Denise, I want to talk about Denise because uh, it's kind of like this. The, uh, it's kind of like a problem that's coming from the same root. It's kind of like trenches coming from the same root. So, you will have back pain. The so let's say okay. So now we 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 went through how your back uh, pain started. Yes. You don't want to. You, you don't need to go through like the biomechanics of why your uh, weak ass, like your ass getting weak, affect your back. But I try to summarize it or like put it like in a very short explanation. Okay. Right. I hope that was clear. But the thing with that is, I will lead the knee pain because when you do something. Let's say, let's say, let's, let's get back to our example of like bending forward to pick up something, or like even, uh, even like riding in your car, like a sitting down, right? So when you sit down, that motion, it's it, we call it like a knee flexion and hip flexion, right? So when you sit down, you actually like you're working with your butt too. If if your butt wasn't there, let's just like imagine your butt was there, you will you will you will sit down like this, you will fall down. Mm -hmm. So your body like. It's like the, the slowing down the motion so you can see. It's like down. a spring. Yeah. Gotcha. Like it breaks. Yep. Your knees in the other side is a helper. Yeah. Right? It's like a rope. Yeah. So when you have the main guy, the guy who's supposed to do the job is absent and you only have the helper. And the helper is not trained to do that thing. Guess what? He will feel overwhelmed. Yeah. And you will start start uh, over reacting. He will get emotional. Yeah. And he will not do the job right. I love it. So that's 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 like the analogy of like why your knees hurting, even though like you're sitting down, your knees are just chilling there. Mm -hmm. Yes, but they get hurt when in, in real life or when you walk in uh, and some place or like sit down because they're taking too much impact because your boots are upset. The main guy here. This is the perfect example of of paying attention to more information. This is this is about like learning about your body. Yeah. Like just make your body. That's 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 what get people who they they proclaim to be like a miracle. There's no miracle. They just yeah learn to learn about themselves. Yeah. And dig deeper to any issue. Like you don't have to read a one thousand book. You just need enough information to understand what's happening yep and another information to understand what you have to do yeah that's it yeah you don't need to learn to to read the whole book about, about biomechanics yeah 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 that's and beautiful then, and then through like trial and fail you, you take this information apply them to yourself and they will work i know for sure they will work but it will not work the same way like everyone yeah. We're different. Right, exactly. Right? Yes. Yes. You're sitting on a chair or like wood chair, I sit on a couch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this this details will even with these details, you will have the same good results about just paying attention yep. to what's going on and yes. then putting some money for it to try to fix that. So so this is the two points of the back pain and knee pain. Once you work on your hip strength, your knees will take a break. Nice. They will take a break. Wow. They will they will you know, when you take a break, they will heal properly. They will get enough room to heal properly. I've, I've been doing stretches more consistently, hip flexor stretches, just gyrating. Here's the thing. And it's changed my knee pain already. It's only been maybe a month I've been trying this. Here's the thing. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good start that you start entertaining even the idea of like doing something. Because yeah. most people, they don't. Yeah. They just go to the doctor, they give them like uh, tons of pills, they start like uh, uh, taking pills, and, and that's it. And, yeah. the, and the pill will kill the pain, and uh, but the issue, it's, it's still there, it's still, still getting worse and worse, to the point when it's too late for you, uh, especially if you, because th those joints, they can get uh, like permanently damaged. Like you can damage yeah. them permanently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you if you keep taking those kind of drugs, the pain, it's it's actually the pain is your friend. Like you, it's your messenger. Mm -hmm. It's like your 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 backup guy. Like it tells you information, very valuable information. Yeah. 
it's a it's a like a messenger from your body to your brain. If your if your brain isn't getting like a messenger, what's what's the the body is doing? Guess what? It would cut it will cut all connection. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. You will, you You're will desensitized. Get, yeah. Yeah. And, and then and then uh, things are getting worse yeah. down there. You, you don't even feel anything. Yeah. Eventually, you will have you will build tolerance for painkiller, and guess what? It will be hell. Yeah. Of the long road. This this is why ro- rules and laws exist is to protect us from ourselves ultimately. Exactly. Yeah. Like you uh, you you entertain sometimes the ideas of. Uh, why do I take too much painkillers? Why do I have so much pain? Am I hypersensitive? What's going on? Am I like weak? I'm a limp? Yes. Why do I like do some small thing that I feel so much pain? Mm-hmm. Yes, because because the, you 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 your pain system, your nervous system, you it, it's being like overwhelmed by you trying to suppress it. It's not it's not functional right anymore. Yeah. Like. You actually doing something will not help you decrease pain. It will make you more prone to even like bigger pains than just joint. It would come from like joint pain. Then like you will have uh, uh, hip or knee replacement. You will uh, uh, walk or move less. And then guess what? That will be emotional pain. Well, let's especially if you are someone who's like used to be active or like have a kid. Yeah. That that that's all. It's something. Uh, it's not easy to deal with uh, as just like uh, working to strengthen your body right, right. to kind of eliminate this kind of sure. things, right? Sure. The third point, so we talked about glutes yeah. and knees. Yes. The third point is the belly. Yes. Again, again, this is not a science. This is my experience. Okay. So no one will claim that where is the study about that? This is my own study. I didn't, I didn't like record it somewhere. You can try it. If it works for you, that's good. If it didn't work for you, you can reach out and it can show you how. Probably you missed something, right? Mm-hmm. The third point is this. The third point is belly fat comes mostly in men from having too much the, uh, estrogen. So your body is producing estrogen more than it should. Interesting. Why is that? Yeah, good question. Why? Why is that? So the, the estrogen, it's a hormone that actually increases whenever you have a low testosterone. It's like a balance. Okay? They have the same precursor, which is uh, cholesterol. So whenever you have more uh, estrogen, you'll have like a little bit less testosterone and vice versa. That's why women, they have too much estrogen or testosterone, they cannot grow muscle. As a man, you will eventually have the same thing. You will have like more, that's why like women are obsessed about belly fat. It's so hard for, it's way harder for them to lose that than men because they have, they have more estrogen than, than men, right? Yeah. So when you get to have more estrogen than men, uh, estrogen will uh, make you gain fat. Your body will store, because because like, talking about like uh, evolution, it's always, the body was trying try to protect itself, right? When you have, so for women, they have estrogen, so they can create more fat. Why? Because the nature designed women to carry babies. So they're they're more in need actually of, of extra fuel store than men, and that's why estrogen. When you have more estrogen, you will have more body fat uh, and testosterone. For men who drive so much, and probably the most, the majority of them drink. It's uh, drinking alcohol and and, and uh, testosterone. It's uh, it's like a, it's like a very it's like there's a direct relationship between them. Hmm. I I know this is the very this is like the the stick point for most men who drink and they want to get fit. This is the the most 
sticking point. Yeah. They, it's hard to get over the fact that you need to drink to do some things mm -hmm. to the point when you will not feel like doing that or you not feel like confident enough to do that without a glass of wine or like a beer. Yes, you will be able to do that, but guess what? There'll be a cost. There's nothing without cost in life. As I said, you, you, you trade addiction with addiction. That's yeah. what, what I did. Yep. So when you have uh, more estrogen, you will gain fat. And fat, you gain it in your belly. Why? Because that's the body where it stores fat, where you have more room in your body, first, second, to protect the organs. So it goes all, and it's the last fat your body you use. I like the, it's like finish the whole tank. Now we're going to go to belly fat. That's like with six pack is so hard. Because they will reveal that like you don't have. It's like subconsciously women attracted to men with six pack because they know they don't they, they don't like that, but subconsciously they are aware that they have a very low body fat because they have high testosterone. It's not the way the six pack looks. No, it's the message it sends to the women yeah. subconscious. So that's why it's very it's very tricky for drivers do, especially the one who drink to manage that I would say my father didn't drink to be honest and he still has he still had like a, a belly and that doesn't mean if you it's not the alcohol is not related to belly fat I, it means like it's really related to, to, to belly fat especially when it makes you eat more mm-hmm when it makes you uh, gotcha it like, desensitizes you and then when, when it makes you like uh, be less active yeah what makes you when it messes up with your uh, hormone uh, balances in your body yeah uh, the first thing I do with people I train is like to they'll get checked they'll give me your like uh, hormone panel because that you can work out so much and your diet and life and you're the same what's going on the mechanism inside your body is not responding. Why? Because you have you have you have something something going on with your uh, with your hormones. You have you have low testosterone. And it, yeah. it's, it's 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 a pandemic right now in in, in, in men. Yeah. And and it's like I believe there, it. There's no one is talking about because it's that's why I'm like always like why 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 uh the, the people with the most influence and power they don't talk about this yeah because they know this is not something men will want to hear it's like taboo it's like you're talking about women age or something they don't want to talk about that they will get you like oh I get checked and they tell me like I 300 milligram and I'm fine you're not fine you're like 40 years old and you 300 that's that's like they, when they made the statistics about oh what's what's the good uh, testosterone level in men, when they made that they brought people. Again, I am a researcher. You, you you can like look up these studies. They made they brought people who they like sedentary, and they like working uh, office jobs, right? The people from where? So, so they brought people who like. Like a, a living a sedentary lifestyle. Yeah. And they're they're working like a sedentary jobs, like a computer or something. Oh, okay. They, they didn't they didn't bring someone who's like uh, physically active. Physically active or like working out. Because yeah. Because that's what's supposed to be the norm, not the guy on, in his computer. Yeah. That's what what's what's healthy. You don't tell. Okay, this is lifestyle. Like if someone working computer, we cannot say that. Uh, no, you you should be working out or like we have to make the norms that it's doable to make everyone feel healthy and and feel, like they can take control. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when they made this chart, they say like, okay, three hundred is good for you. Three hundred is not good for you, my man. Yeah. It's not good. It's not. Yeah. Like, as a man between eighteen. And even like up to sixty, your your testosterone shouldn't drop below five hundred. Yeah, you know, and and to to add to that, when when you feel that way and you're not sure why, 
that's where depression starts seeping in is because you're missing the information and your your mood is is a delay in the connection of your mind and body. So like a wireless modem, if it's too far, your computer is in a room too far, you're not going to be able to hear it. So it's effectively trying to take that signal and make it as clear as possible. And until you until you start managing that inner system, your outside world is going to reflect chaos and you're going to be wondering why. So I think that's the important thing for truck drivers and and because we feel stuck i'm going to speak i should just speak for myself but there are times when the hours pile up the time has gone by and part of your life has been taken from you because you know you just don't have the energy and this is a vicious cycle that truck drivers live in is is we feel trapped because let's put it this way we didn't get in the truck because we love working indoors with people we, we got in the truck because it gave us the freedom to, to be, be ourselves and not succumb. So we're, we have this unique experience where we can say and do whatever we want. However, you know, if you get too comfortable with that, which is a dangerous possibility, if you accept that I'm alone, nobody can tell me what to do, you start to lose the idea that leadership even matters. And then you lose touch with yourself. But like, no matter what you do and where you go, if you can attain that leadership quality in, in how you direct yourself, it is never about telling someone else what to do. It is merely by m- mimicking this this potential that you know of. And when you can put the suit on and you feel good and you're you're resting your body, you're not exercising that day because you gave you worked out hard the previous day, but you're still stretching and you're doing all these things for yourself, it's that's where you can really tap into the change. If so any truck driver listening, if you've already started and you've already uh, taken steps to, to learning, I think the important part for me in this conversation is that I want to know what kind of exercises c- can I reasonably do to better that. And with an injury in the knee, how do I, you know, because that's overwhelming as a truck driver. I remember thinking, there's no way like my I can feel my hips now my hips are being affected like there I feel the soreness something feels wrong something's wrong and then same with the knee and the knee's trying to compensate and so it's a lot of this this red area on my body and I'm afraid to do something and then break myself even more so yeah, you know exactly. so that's why um, um, so we when we, we talk about exercise and then to get results from exercise that's why I said I ask I ask people always like to get checked and if they have some kind of something going on I try to talk to them about some uh, lifestyle changes and uh, eventually the most cases like most cases work when you change some lifestyle uh, habits in your life your hormonal level will get balanced again and it, it might it might feel so stiff at the beginning but eventually when you bring this homeostasis to your body that will help you do exercise your exercise will be more efficient because when you try to strengthen a muscle you need when you have enough testosterone when you try to, to strengthen your muscle they respond right yes they get bigger yeah right yeah and if you don't have that that's like a primary uh, material for that you will struggle but eventually you will be able to do something better than doing nothing yes like you will at least decrease your pain yeah. that's for sure yeah the way how men right now are dealing with the stress is the number one reason why they have low testosterone levels and why it's like very accepted right now for men to have like or like it's being made as a charts to have like low testosterone and you will go to your doctor and you will uh will ask them can i check my testosterone and they, he will send you to the lab and uh, brought back to, and he will tell you oh that's okay this sounds good yes it's good for someone who's like sedentary working uh desk job not active but i'm feeling depressed i don't have energy yeah Help me out here. Mm-hmm. He will not. He will not tell you. 
He will not tell you because they, they, they are not being trained to teach people changing their lifestyle. Yeah. They train it to diagnose, prescribe. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's up to you. Yeah. If you really into bettering yourself, you will look for this information. Yeah. You will look for Good like point. Is this really true? Let's make this. Let's make uh, do my research. It won't take you a half hour on googling to find out that's completely not enough for you. But the doctor wouldn't tell you that because he has charts, and those charts being made with people like you, sedentary. Uh, they, they 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 weren't scanned for depression or like active, right? Yeah. This is, this is why sometimes when I find like a, a scientific study, what I do. I always try to find more scientific studies and then look for the funding and look for uh, the like the volunteers population. So the data from these studies will never be accurate one hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Right. Because the protocol how they made that it's 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 uh, it's very let's say it's very the standards it's it's very what not you're looking for like if your goal is to be fit and actively strong you cannot follow this kind of charts you 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 kind of really do your own research yeah to come up with the idea that i need to increase my testosterone level yeah and it gives you uh, give me like more energy more uh, power doing workout give me better sleep etc but that will that will be like a, a, a trade-off with with the, with the number one as i said stress which is the one most case lead to what alcohol yeah so yeah that's that's the vicious so you feel stressed stressed by itself it's cortisol cortisol testosterone they have the same relationship like testosterone and estrogen. If you're too stressed, your your this is a level plummet. If you manage your stress uh, right way, your this is level will increase. If you manage your stress by let's say this painkillers uh, or like a, 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 what they call them uh, exogenous shots or something like that, they give you shots too for pain. Yeah. Or you go to alcohol to numb all the pain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you making things way worse uh, up ahead in your on your uh, fitness journey or like what you're trying to accomplish from your fitness uh, so you're talking about switching addictions is, is is basically the therapy you're you're not using alcohol the the good decision is to not use alcohol to cover the pain but to do exercise to to run therapy for the body like that's what you're the body has its own mechanisms to even heal uh, depression or pain or anything. The problem is not in your body. It's in your mind. Mm. It's like you're always entertaining this kind of like mm -hmm. shortcuts. You're like mostly addicted to shortcuts the same way you're addicted yeah. to sandwich. Yeah. You always like look for the something the more quick fun. Fix. Yeah. More fun, more quick, more easy to do, more, you know, easy peasy. You know, always avoiding that uh, long road, which is start with you try to learn about yourself. What's really going on? Yeah. You don't have to wake up and do deadlifts in the first day. Yeah. You just you just start learning about yourself. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anyone. Just open uh, internet and and look up things about like uh, about like way back pain. Like you can have this information. Yeah. If you want to, but you will, and you you don't need like this so called because no one can be an expert uh, about your body except for you. Yeah. And it, it, I'm telling you, I'm not a scientist. It that, that doesn't take like a Einstein brain to figure out these things. Yeah. You know, like if you really, if you're pain, that's why I say like it's not about motivation. It's about like love. Your like pain, like you're fed up with this thing, like. I get I get like an accident on a, a big ship. I was uh, used to be a mechanic, and then my my hand almost got cut in the machine, right? Because I was trying to fix that machine, and I was like, kind of like not having the strength enough. Eventually, the machine won, and then it almost cut my hand. So 
on that point I felt so like uh, after that I, felt, I, I was like emotionally and physically broken yeah because I felt like shit I, I lost my job I was like financially broke I lost my things like and then you you, you find out like the, the, the worst part like if you find out who's really, who's really close to you or who's, who's been pretending to sure yeah it's like this time's like further out the good ones. The ones that serve you and the ones that don't, yeah. So when I felt that pain, like emotional pain, like I'm in a deep shit right now, I don't have I don't have anything. I even like started like my trial because my insurance company they didn't want to um com- they don't want to give me a compensation for that because I always work for a company. So I started like trial and stuff. Anyway, so I felt so much pain and I felt like the, the bottom. And that's why it was like my first spark. If you're not someone who's still looking for motivation, I'm telling you right now, you just don't have enough pain. When you get to the point, <laughs> when you get yeah. to the point where it's like, shit. Yeah. Like my life is like shit. I'm yeah. feeling like shit. Excuse me for my language. No, you're on I'm point. I'm so freaking feeling so much pain right now. Mm-hmm. There's something will happen that will like instantly like, shift your mind yeah i don't know where's that moment but it doesn't you cannot plan for it it yeah. happens sub, like spontaneously mm-hmm. like you get to so much pain that you say that would that pain will take over all those kind of like i want motivation or i want to like yeah mind. that would take over the space yeah like there was they will occupy our mind yeah you will totally. start taking action mm-hmm. so Going back to uh, the, the the workout for the truck drivers, as I said, you don't have to s- start with doing that the first day. Yeah. Just take take a take a, a first step of start with exercise better than nutrition. So when you, you when you want to start something that's good for you, and is it, it, when you have two parts that say nutrition and exercise, right? Start with exercise. Because nutrition, it's a tricky part. It's still your addiction, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Exercise, you're introducing to your brain a new addiction. So you cannot establish a new addiction. You cannot switch the old one before you establish the new one, right? Yeah. So what, what will a hamburger will make you feel? Eventually, if, if you take enough exercise, it will make you feel the same. And then you drop out the hamburger. Yeah. Uh, so you will switch to exercising. So you 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 still taking you still like eating the way it makes you comfortable, but at least exercise. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's okay. Yep. But don't reward yourself with. Pay attention to this point because yes. this is this is very important. Yes. When I say start with exercise, don't reward yourself for exercise with more hamburger. So when you say <laughs> when you say like when you say like I used to eat five hamburgers a day. And then I started exercising because Zaki told me I started exercising. Yeah. And then you start exercise. And then after you exercise, you eat two more hamburgers. That's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, six. Right. Guess what? That's not gonna work. Yeah. Stick with your four. Stick with the four at, le- at least like like one month into exercising. Then you, sh- you start decreasing that. Yeah. Right. Yes. You cannot you cannot trick yourself uh, with eating more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. This is this is uh, something uh, a truck driver can start with. Start exercising. That's why I made exercise program for free and not the nutrition program because I know a nutrition program will never work for a fact for people unless, as as I said, unless you are in deep pain to change mm-hmm. and you are start like cold turkey. I don't recommend that. I recommend even myself when I felt pain. I didn't go to the gym first day and do squats, deadlift. No, I start. I start looking up things, learning. Yeah. Like learning things, learning things about my body, what I'm weak, how I'm gonna strengthen. Yeah. And getting the right information, as I said, selective ignorance. So yeah. So whatever you see in the in on um, Instagram or like uh, on YouTube, like uh, 45 days up program yeah all right i can't i i i am not in a position to like call these people sure because it's doable yeah yeah i admit it but 
it's superficially doable. It means it gives you the look, but your mind isn't fit. Yeah, yeah. Like you will, it will give you six pack. Yeah. If you follow, you follow the program. Sure, sure. But you will lose it because your mind, you didn't get my your mind in shape. That's really important because, too. Because you didn't, you didn't really uh, kind of like embody the real change yes. in your mind. Yeah. Like you just follow the plan. Yeah. And then it gave you results. Yeah. You didn't, you, you didn't say, you didn't question things. That that's important to me because when I see the images on the videos that I'm perceivably researching it it has become just a different perspective and like you mentioned about books I take chunks of information from each of these workout videos and try to implement them into my truck into the day of working at the truck I bring sometimes I'll bring bands with me which I haven't experimented too much with I just barely broke the ice with that uh, my dolly weighs about maybe 30 pounds and I, I do hammer curls with that as I'm walking to and from a stop after I don't have the product I've learned that I can do uh, shrugs with my dolly at a at a particular angle with product on it like I can get workouts in every crevice of the day and that eliminates that sense of guilt and impossibility that I can't do it the lunges and and things like that like I'm only saying I'm sharing this because it's uh it's hard to to make the change but it is absolutely possible and uh you know like I said like I'm I'm so hopeful that I can commit to myself um still working on that you know you can kind of hear that like I'm I'm still working on this new relationship with me because it's easy to fall back, man. I've lost, I've weighed 300 pounds at 5'8 at the age of 25. And then I decided to start walking and I heard all the noises come from my body, which I had been ignoring for a good five years up to that point. And Slowly but surely, walking turned into jogging. Jogging turned into running. Running became consistent. Eventually, I had lost 100 pounds. Wow. And, you know, I was living with an old man at the time. It was my great-grandfather. Uh, I had to be his caretaker. The environment and atmosphere of the home had to be a safe space for an elderly man to navigate through and to manage his stress. And so that that instinctively got me to to get on board with some things as far as rules and discipline go uh but you know i had since then that was in you know 20 27 was the last time i weighed anything under 220 and since then uh between relationships um you know life events children uh you know just life happens it's like any drivers when you feel like your back's against the wall and you don't you know how to make a change um that's a desperation i'm familiar with and i think you know if we're addressing it i just hope that uh at some point the decision is made and you and you take pride in that alone just you know that's the win is that first step and even if you fumble through a couple of days and you try it again is as long as you're giving yourself the opportunity to turn something around like you have it it's in there you know it's in there you're aware you know you have the power to do something it's yeah. is it painful enough yet which is what you were saying that it's going to have to get painful enough for you to wake up i made another sh like a uh, shirt workout chair saying pain is your friend like that's that's because I, whenever I do a program for someone and they started like the first week, they the first complaint is like I feel so much pain. I feel the next day like pain everywhere. It's like you 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 feel in your your body life. Yes. And it's it's kind of like good kind of pain, not a nagging pain from your knee. Yeah. It's you started learning how to uh, distinguish or like you could this the pain signals coming from your body. You will start like figuring out like, which what kind of pain is good, what kind of pain is bad. Because not all, all pain is like uh, meaning you'll get injured. Right, right. But, but this is one of one component of exercise is gonna get you to learn. You will start learning about all kind of pains uh, coming from your body, and and you will start 
building a better relationship with that. Yes. Because the, the better you communicate with your body, the better you'll be uh, able to control it more, the better it responds with whatever uh, you're trying to get it to do. Because that's the link. You, so w- whether you're going to perceive those pains from workout like something good, positive, otherwise you would think of them like an injury. Your nervous system will not distinguish that's a good thing, right? Yeah. And it will overwhelm you. It will be stressed out all the time. You'll be really stressed out. Like you will feel whenever you work out, you will be you won't be able to do five because it's so much pain. Yeah. But if you change your perspective about that pain, yeah, you're yeah. training your nervous system, telling it like that's okay. It's yes. a good kind of pain. It will the pain will, will decrease it. You, you know, so in most cases, when a person is, is having a difficult time emotionally and their reaction to something is harsh or strong or maybe seems inappropriate, it's stemming from their association to their own pain. And I think when when the world is displaying this through behavior of human beings or even an animal, because if an animal's rabid, it's it's in pain and, and there are things happening to its physiolo- physiology, right? So going back to the, the negative positive, the association to pain is how you handle stress. And if you know your weak points in handling stress, you can do yourself a favor and others around you understanding the signals because you're not going to get rid of it. You've mentioned that before. The anxiety, the addiction, it's there. You've got to replace it. But more importantly, you have to create a relationship with it. You have to create a compromise and you have to allow it to exist because if you deny it, that's where we find ourselves in trouble. You know, and I think um, I think when it comes to our association to pain, and how we treat each other, therein lies the question that you have to ask yourself, where is this coming from? Because a lot of us will get involved emotionally in something. And, you know, not long after that, we're thinking, you know, in retrospect, damn, I should, I could have done, I could have done differently. And that's fine, right? You make mistakes, we make mistakes. But walk up to that version of yourself, look them in the face and say, I'm sorry about that. You know, I know you had something to say. And, I'm going to be here for you next time. And you just try to listen. You just try to listen because the relationship inside you is a lot like the ones outside you. When you feel ruffled and you feel like somebody's offended you, it's the same. It's reflected inside. And what's great about today's times is we're reminded of how painful humanity is to be in, how how suffering is a normal, natural side effect of existence, right? So negativity is a natural part of the picture. The question is, you do you want the good negative or the bad negative because you can happen to the moment or the moment can keep happening to you it's where do you choose to stand do you do you choose to stand in in front and take control of this ship or are you going to ride passenger and that's fine too if that's what you want to do but when the pain comes it's going to be a struggle and hell on earth may be something you experience and that's that's a real fact that's a story shared from generation to generation hell exists right here if you lose touch with your godly parts with your heavenly self because we're miracles man i mean you can't deny that right one in four million chance we get to be born how do you throw that away how do we throw that away by not paying attention to ourselves and then be able to pay attention to each other like we owe it to each other we owe it to our ancestors who went through horrible fucking times lost their lives for our benefit to be free and to roam this land eating chocolate all fucking day if we wanted that's fine but at the end of the the road your legacy is the person in your mind and when it comes time for those lights to go out that energy is your legacy to the people who know you and love you and trusted you and, and, and shared space with you in time and, and commemorate you. Do you want that to be a good experience? Do you want that to carry the fu- through to the future through anybody you interact with? I have become highly aware of how important my health is for the, ha- for the benefit of others. And like, I'm, like you say, you're passionate about this. I've become very, very passionate about this this stance that I feel like I have to take in my personal life. And it's intimidating even to myself. Like, can you keep this up? Like you gonna be in a good mood all the time. Like, what are you doing here? We put on a show, you seeking attention. No, man, I just feel good. I feel really good. And I know that I've felt really, really bad before. 
I, I have had the human experience and we worry about each other. Clearly the world worries about itself. Like what's going on here, people like pay attention and, and be kind. Practice being kind to people before you're kind to yourself. It doesn't matter. Start somewhere. And the further you dig deep into that, the better off everybody is. It's happening. It's happening. So, you know, grab on tight. Do what you can to, to hang in there because uh, uh, upon a pan- pandemic, upon crazy political craziness out there in the world, if you can anchor yourself to your ground and your community, you are a hero effectively a hero exactly like like uh like as 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 you mentioned like uh the pandemic and how it's like how it's like affecting everyone now in a way that they are uh so panicked and it's like it's like a very conflicting emotions about this pandemic since the start because people were will always think that uh they, they, they didn't get prepared enough for that. They've been like rushed into the, this like new lifestyle of s- sitting home, not doing anything, and then not exercising, gaining weight, and feel bad about themselves. But the, the, the thing with that is you create your own reality. Like if you look at the, the news about the pandemic, they are the same every day. The guidelines are the same every day. The scientists are saying the same every day. You're overwhelming yourself with consuming this information every day, processing them. It's the same goddamn thing, and it will take more time. Whether you make peace with that or you get hooked like the most and panic, I stop, I stop exercising, stop eating healthy. Whatever you can do at the gym, you can do at home. And I pretty much proved that. Like I, I, I started like doing. Uh, challenges like I will tell people tell me one thing you, you don't do at the gym you, you do it at the gym you can do at home and I'll show you how you do it when you give them the ideas and I send them videos about how I do that how I do this, they get like wow that's of course because your attention is not creating solution mm-hmm. it's not trying to create yeah. your, your reality you cope with that your attention is like on what's going on with this pandemic you don't have any control yeah you have control of your own life, what you can do at home. Stop consuming that and start creating solutions. Start adapting. Like, you're wasting four months now or five months doing nothing. Like, in this four months, like, people will have, like, a, they, they will study for something. They will, like, build skill. They will do, like, you know. But... It's so waste of energy, time, especially time that you're like just looking or or like being drawn in this kind of like information mm-hmm. where you don't have control. Even though if you think you have control and you want to, oh, I want to have control. I want to share my voice. But you're just going to add to the noise. Like, if you want to make change, start from yourself. Start pointing fingers around you and start make, making change from you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So, this is another point when you tell, like, I don't feel energy. Yes, because your energy has been used somewhere else. And you don't, you, you just have that the much energy. You don't, have, you, you don't have any limited source of energy. Yeah. You just have the, this, the, the right amount of energy that you need to yeah. create change, but you're misusing that in some bullshit you don't have control over. You just drown it emotionally and you're not aware of that. Right? Yeah. When I see people like sometimes... I was doing this. I was doing this see? just before the pandemic. I had gained... I was at 260 pounds after that 2007 number of, of 300 or 216 pounds. So I put on all that weight. And it was ups and downs. I took it off. I put it on. I took it off. I put it on. And here I am. I'm going to turn 40 in July. And, you know, maybe it's a turning point. It's a coming of age thing. It's the rites of passage, whatever it is. My analytical mind won't stop. So I have to make peace with that. Like, if we're going to be digging around, we better like ourselves. Because if I'm in this head all day and I'm saying mean things to myself, it is a bad experience. And not just for me. 
everybody. So again, like I, I'm overwhelmingly like head over heels for well-being. And I don't mean to like shove my my experience down anybody's throat, but I can't help this compulsion to dig in and and make noise doing. In fact, if anybody heard this podcast and never came back to listen to another one and they changed their lives, like that's that's all I would ever ask for. If, even one person. Yeah. If you can change one person, yeah, uh, perspective and yeah. get them to take action, yeah, that would be that would be like a good outcome because yeah. that's what we're trying to do is to get people to really understand that they are in control. They don't need to be taught or like uh, they don't need a, a guru to give them books or like a seminars. They can do everything by themselves uh, if they start using the energy within the right way. Yeah. And self investment, like investing time. Yeah. Attention, especially attention, because that's the that's yeah. the that's the difference between you, you are paying attention to think that really matters versus things that don't matter and then you cons consuming too much energy in the things that really don't matter at all it's only getting you worse and worse without without even you realizing it. it's like programming your own subconscious yeah you will have like a, a some hole like a black hole in your subconscious sucking in all the energy and then you will end up like facing the mirror why well, don't have energy to work out and change my shape i feel like shit your 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 energy being consumed in a way that's not beneficial to you just like pay attention to you you are the price like you pay attention to this fact that you are your solution it's within you are the price and wherever you you pay your attention to you're gonna grow it's not about you will attract it it's just gonna suck energy out of you it's not gonna occupy too much space in your brain you don't need that yeah it's, it's not gonna get you anywhere mm -hmm. it's hard to fight that but it's good to figure out that you have that like you you figure out that's the way things is working like I am spending too much time yeah, absolutely. with things yeah. that don't matter. And my attention is always in bullshit or things I cannot control. That's exactly what the first episodes of this podcast became for me. Was I was diving into subject matter that I had no information about. And I found myself violating a sacred space with people by simply bringing up shit I don't know. And trying to trying to offer a solution for pain that I am not familiar with, you know? And, and I realized that speaking to others' pain is the most inappropriate, I think, people can be with each other is, I don't need you to tell me how to feel better. I just need you to listen and, and offer a solution. You know what I mean? And a solution is not in the form of uh, positivity. Don't just pat me on the back and say, well, you're doing this right and you're doing that right. Like, Give me a solution. Pick something. I've just talked to you. We can do this for each other if we have the research done simply by doing the activity ourselves. But, you know, a driver saw me the other day doing push-ups and dips at the truck. And I was stretching. I did a few jumping jacks, right? I never do this. In fact, I was almost too embarrassed to try it. But I didn't care because I had been feeling so good. And as I walked up past this driver, he says, you know, I'm about to go in there and do some push-ups myself. He said, you got me thinking. And that's the beautiful thing about it's health. Contagious. Yes. Like like it's it's really that, that's why we're trying to share here like our experiences yeah. so because this kind of energy even though it's not let's not label it like positive or negative this is just an energy yeah good and if it works for you that's great if you think this is another like episode of what you like what what everyone is saying or like yeah. trying to promote or like like that sure. that's your choice yeah the 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 advice i'm giving here is like you pay attention and you will find yourself uh, the best way to deal with uh, self-improvement so you yep. just pay attention 
to things that really matters and not things that just fit in your emotional uh, Void. state. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe that's, that's not another thing. Like, the, we, we don't have something. Uh, it's like the the emotional void yeah. was something like people would they say you have an emotional void and you try to fill it with food yeah yeah right yeah the fact that you are already emotional by the way this is different from women to men okay the fact that you're being emotional it's by itself a question it means do you really have emotionally do that or you just enjoy being that like that way especially for men this is very true I like that yeah. women women they will never get that like women psychologically or physiologically like they will never get why men should deal with emotion differently yeah and how they do that yeah like how they don't ignore emotions, but they better at dealing with them. Like, for men, it's very crucial to learn this. Because, as, I, as we said before, it's, it's related to your physiology. It's like related to your hormonal states, too. Mm -hmm. Like, women, they get emotional. Because, especially, let's say, during their period, because they have so much hormonal imbalances. Right? You yeah. see like too much energy right. going. Right. For men, they 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 don't get let's say to experience that. Even though sometimes I see men trying to be so like like uh, vulnerable on TV, like uh, TV shows I saw I see like men like crying or like sitting with his wife and crying or like showing that he's very vulnerable and he has a heart or like that that's they think like that's attractive for women that even some men i feel like they use it as a game sure you know? yeah yeah absolutely use it like oh, i'm very vulnerable yeah and vulnerability means i'm strong I'm yeah strong, vulnerable, so I'm yeah strong. yeah i like here's, that you're here's, saying that here's the thing about that it's not i've done it I've done it. I've done it too. <laughs> I just want to throw that in there no, because no, no, I think no, no, that's no. important. Like, no, 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 I've done it too. To be, to be honest with yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I've done it too. But I felt that I, I, I didn't do it in a way that I was trying to attract the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. I, I've done it in a way that uh, I felt it will makes me feel good. Yeah, about being like so vulnerable or yeah. so open or like. I'm very vulnerable. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, yes, it, yes, it makes yes. me like perceived as, as a strong, right? Yeah. But it's not gonna make you. It's not gonna make you strong if you are vulnerable, or like you show, you're like you're so delicate. And you have a heart. Yeah. That's very. That's like a almost a feminine trait. That's how they 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 look at that. Yeah, and yeah. They they uh, 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 like empathize with that. Sure. They will show you that that's a good thing. Yeah. And that's very, like, uh, beloved or yeah. like, encouraged. Yeah. Men. It, they will say that. But down deep, they don't, they really uh, disgust. If fair enough. Saying, don't feel attracted to. Uh, they may, it makes them feel insecure because I think sometimes women latch onto that for their own deficiencies for their own insecurities they feel the need to fix a problem that isn't theirs to fix and then it becomes one of those one of those issues they don't want you to compete with them yeah they want someone who can handle handle better this kind of this kind of like yeah. expression right yeah it's like not crying if you if you like i don't say that oh you have to be like a, a macho or like a kid right but i'm just saying that this idea about vulnerability and it shows that uh, inner strength mm -hmm. it can be true for women sure it cannot be true for men because as a man your your main asset is is, is your attention right yeah you pay attention to facts like you pay attention to things you're, you're like you're like a very uh, reasonable right if you see that you're being emotional 
That's part of your attention. What you do, you manage your, your emotions with your attention. If your attention is somewhere else, you will be looked at like as, uh, as emotional. And then you will try to, uh, to even make it a way to attract the opposite sex. Yeah. By, oh, I'm very vulnerable. I have a heart. I'm very like... Uh, Trying to take a shortcut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's in the surface. It feels so appealing to women, let's sure. say. Or like whoever the hell, like the crowd. Yeah. But you're like hurting your like inner attention to what's really matters. Yeah. And with you being, being like emotional or expressing that it's giving you a fake feeling of feeling good it's yeah. like eating hamburger for 10 seconds the, the 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 proof for that is men who who behave that way they always feel like shit and they always cry and you can't notice until they get to the point when they realize like i'm not I'm, I'm really not change, change or like <laughs> women are not attracted to me or like uh, you know yeah uh, because because women they don't tell you what they think or like they, they just like always try to tell you what they think it makes you feel good or like less hurtful yeah right? yeah so they want to facade like showing empathy to you yeah but, but in their subconscious you're showing them a feminine energy yeah and they're not getting yeah. any closer. You're not getting any closer with that. Like, we learn how like to manage, and that's our asset. We learn how to manage emotions with our attention, and and that's what makes like a more of a masculine energy, right? You see, like men struggle a lot, and they have this kind of like I call it like a pandemic. Mm -hmm. They have like. The testosterone declining, uh, sperm count is declining. Uh, their uh, y, uh, y chromosome, or the hell is that? it's like it's like disappearing. The whole like the male chromosome is disappearing. Like you, you ask yourself question, why this is happening? It's like because of lifestyle. It's more of of, of the the. I see it more of like interpersonal relationships. Yes. In society, more of like the the. Let's say like the the work or like the because if you have if you're like as in like if you, if you're like in a, in a good mindset you will have the energy to go uh, to work out and uh, that will increase your self esteem yes and that will increase your physical level and then you will get to that loop when you're having a very good mind state yeah. Uh, with with the uh, with a better state i think that you know the, the attention thing the attention you seek from others is generally attention you can give yourself and and that's that's the tricky part right is is how do you how do you turn the eye so that you can stand steady and confident in the space you occupy because if your attention somewhere else you're not in that space and I think that it is that it's that mind body connection. If you can resonate with the energy that's that's inhabiting you, if you can have some real clear vision as to what that energy means to you, you can then tend to those relationships in in your natural highest potential of your biological form, because we're, we're inside this brain as a passenger. Right. But. All the while, we have to control the mechanism. And if we don't, then life takes its own course. I mean, obviously, you know, a virus came out of the 20th, 21st century, and we're just standing here with our thumbs in our asses wondering, like, what the hell do we do? It's like, well, that's what the world is telling you is, look, there are things evolving in you. And if you don't prepare for the, the pandemic inside, if you don't prepare for it, like the negligence that we've experienced as a culture, we didn't prepare for it. We, pull up, we pour all of our resources into agriculture so we can keep feeding this beast, right? All of our money goes into the distractions, the, the addictions that we have. And the only way to fix that on a larger scale is, is the individual. That's it. It's the only answer is in the individual.
this is uh, this is exactly why uh, I said it's 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 uh, it's it's okay sometimes to be social, but if you want to improve who you are and and the parameter of that like on the setting of that rules one of the rules is when you're trying to improve yourself one of the rules is like how others are like reflecting that or like a praise from them like you hear it's like you're working out and then like uh, after a month or so like one of your friends said hey man good job you worked out and that's one of the things gonna keep you yeah. moving forward. So when you have that in role in your roles, I found it it's way better if you don't wait for affirmations mm -hmm. from others. Because mm -hmm. you have the main biggest, most effective affirmation from yourself. Yeah. Your goal when you set goals, you really try always to vet the the steps the rules uh, uh, to get to that and then you you try to put the most part of your energy in what really matters because your choice of putting attention to others is coming from you it's a more of like emotional uh, state than like your rationalized that this is for me yeah i i really don't wait for your affirmation i don't need it i'm doing this for myself I'm, I'm i'm doing this to build my own i don't need approval from anyone because there would be a burden for you to wait for affirmation because affirmation from others will work only so far they will they will get the time when you stopped hearing that or I don't know. It's just like you get time when it's just depleted, like you know. And people will say to you stuff that is look, that's like sounds encouraging, or like sounds like it's good, right? But I'm not saying don't be uh, receptive. Yeah, yeah. Just don't focus on that so much. Yeah, yeah. Just have the mindset that's. Just why people are saying to be nice. Yeah, this is about how you feel. So yeah, it's, yeah. You, you don't wait for that person, that check or that mm -hmm. that that thing outside source to, to tell, tell you. you yeah. That. So yeah. you will have what's left, you and your own. Yeah. If you just do your exercises and do your meals, you get information from you automatically. Yeah. Your goal is not getting in shape. Your yeah. goal is just stay second with the routine. Yeah. That's the most. Achievable yeah, that's goal. beautiful. Like you don't get. You say like I want to be 200 pounds. Your goal shouldn't be 200 pounds. Yeah. Your goal is, you research how to get there. You put the steps. Your goal is like to get the steps done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't obsess about 200 pounds. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You get better than 200 pounds. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. that's why you always like feeling so far away. Yeah. Like I can't reach it. Yeah. No. Your attention is like in something, it's yeah. not in your control. What's in your control right now is you work out for the day. Finish it. That's your yeah. goal. Yeah, yeah. Celebrate. Yeah. Or or hear your voice when you when you have it of go go in there and lift those weights. Correct. Go go in there and, and walk on the treadmill. Go in there and, and stretch. Use the bands to stretch. Stretch deep. And and if you're done, you're done. It's all good. Little little niblets for you. You know, I tell you something, but I'm I'm, I'm not supposed to like to say names. Yeah, I trained some people, like women and women. They after like the workout, so after like the session, I get feedback from them. I get feedbacks that so someone doesn't make sense, but for me, I know what why, why they feel that way. I hear feedbacks from people who they've been working on. Uh, like let's say tiresome desk job after doing a deadlift in the morning or like squats they text me or like send me text messages saying i'm on my desk right now and i cannot i just want to jump on my desk and start like dancing yeah what's going on yeah. with me what did you do yeah and then the other ones will tell me hey we just did a session in the morning and then i went on a date today 
it was so different than any other dates. It's not about like they show that they're fit. Right. It's about their mental. They're like interpersonal, like yeah. a dialogue or a relationship yeah. that's better. They're controlling their attention from yeah from uh, the workout. Yeah, yeah. So so beautiful. It's 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 it's, it's really rewarding for the mind when you do uh, physical workouts. It's if you don't get it the first week, there is there is time when you get it. And that will be your start into the new your new addiction. Like that's how you your start your new um, thing that's o- occupy like your your brain. Like you always want more of that. Yeah. Okay. But it requires you just the 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 take action in yeah. the right way. Right, right, right. Like you don't like you don't disable yourself by saying I want two hundred pounds. Oh, I know. I want a six packs. Right, right. I want a big butt. Got to be somewhat just, realistic. Just your 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 goal should be. Today I'm gonna do my workout. Yeah. Uh, in two weeks the goal is to do eight workout. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah, forget yeah. Forget about forget about the big the big thing. Yeah. It won't get you anywhere. Right, right. Think Even about. Even if it did, most in most cases it's cookie cutter diets. Yeah. Or plans that it's not really shaping your mind. Your, your job is like to train your mind to get fit through this kind of practices of like building habits. So your goal is like to do the workouts. And then when you do the workouts, you feel a reward because you, you have accomplished something. Yeah. So you, what you're telling your brain is like, I like doing the workout. And your brain will eventually uh, believe it and keep asking you for that. Right? Yeah. But if you say, I want to have a pounds weight. When you get there, you get rewarded, then guess what? It will, it's a you got to look for something else. You asked about bad knees, right? Yeah. Is that for you? Yeah, yeah, definitely for me. So, as I said, like your your knees, you have they have back pain. Mm-hmm. Which one starts first? Well, right now the back pain is overriding everything, and it's it's in the middle of my back. Okay, in the middle of your back. And I've been doing a lot more exercise. Do, do you remember when it started? Like whether your knees are. Really yeah. Bad? Um, you know, I think I, I went to help somebody do some yard work and that motion was a lot of this and a lot of strenuous movement in the upward position. And it was shortly after that, and then possibly a back workout to try and make the pain spread evenly kind of thing. I was trying to figure out my own therapeutic so, so the first advice, if you allow me to give you, is whenever you feel pain, don't stretch. That could be oh. the first thing to do. Wow. Because if you look at, at, the, at, the, at the pain, sometimes it's like this. It's like strain, right? Mm-hmm. It's like this, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the way the pain is like you have micro tears. And then what you do with stretching is this. I see. Okay. What you choose with stretching is to give it some time to heal. To kind of like... There is a way how you can push these two sides more in, mm-hmm. so this one will heal. Okay. Do you, do you get the, the, the point? Because people, I do. What they do after stretching, they uh, after getting injured is they stretch. It feels good. Sure. Uh, because it, it it feels good because it pushes away flush out the inflammation. Yeah. But it can make things worse. The best thing, as I said, pain isn't your enemy. Yeah. The pain sensitivity, it's coming from you. Try always to fight pain. Like, if you feel in pain, try to kind of, like, train yourself to be more receptive to pain. Take it with the, with the deep breath. It will subside. It's telling you something. You don't fight it back. Right? Yeah. That's, like, the, the, the most first thing people will get hurdled with is dealing with pain the wrong way. Yeah. Because... We as a, we as like uh, children always like don't do that. You're gonna be painful. You're gonna get hurt. Right, gonna right. Get, don't play like that. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, guess what? It, it the, the 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 nervous system will 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 be built in a way that's it's hypersensitive, so overwhelmingly like protective. Any small scratch, you will start like wow. The way how to deal with that is to. Sh- First, change your perspective about the pain itself. 
not yeah. thinking it's a bad thing. Yep. Think about it's a necessary in your process, what we're trying to do. Yep. And deal with it like with, with deep breathing. There's like a whole thing for, about that. But so uh, uh, long story short, uh, yeah, I can work with him, but I need to, to see what's going on. Sure, sure. Okay, cool. I mean, and, and I myself am interested because it's become even more important for me to get as deep into the meditation of lifting and stretching and compound movements. And, you know, I want to get deep into the crevices that matter the most in terms of aging and the joints and the arthritis. And, you know, I want to be able to doctor myself when I feel, when I get associated with some signal of pain and be able to do it um, in a legitimate way so that I'm not not disguising it or trying to overcompensate in some way. But yeah, I, I think, I think somehow your expertise has fallen into my reality, which is a huge, huge benefit for me. So yes, I will take you up on your expertise. Do you have the weights at home? I do. I have dumbbells up to 50. Dumbbells? Yeah. You have a barbell? Uh, not yet. I just got a uh, apparatus to to set the the bar on. I'm working on getting the the extras, the bar and the weights. But so uh, since you have dumbbells, I can like create a program for you that you will do uh, like a, a full body workout to the dumbbells, including the lifts. But you will start like with some, let's say like a, uh, a beginner exercises that will like let's say like just get you to feel your body parts right? yeah yeah because that's why i don't want you to jump straight away into like lifting heavy stuff yeah i want you to build a relationship communication with your body yeah first. yeah so when you do an exercise you you know which muscles would be used for that particular exercise and then you will try to fill it yeah like for example like oh, chest press when you do chest press this movement like mo most most uh, guys, when you do chest press, and you just they, they just pay attention to the movement itself, right? Yeah. But as I explained before, the body yeah yeah can use a different muscle to do the same movement. Right. So that's why your chest is not growing because you're doing like this, and then you you pay attention to the movement. Yes, you do, but you can be just w working your forearms or shoulders. Yeah, yeah. So you, if you're not feeling this, yeah, yeah, working, right? You're 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 yeah. overwhelming probably like the the wrong spots. Yeah. So that's why your workouts will be like. Easy going. Sure. You don't feel challenged. Like yeah. You don't feel challenged, but you get to learn how to tune down yeah. the sensation that you feel your your muscle. Because when you when you lift heavy weights, yeah. There's too much going on. Yeah. That you won't hear those um, like sensation coming from your muscle. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, you will just like uh, feel like uh, your your lungs are getting bigger. You feel like a rush of like uh, you know dopamine rush or like you know adrenaline rush you don't you don't get to feel your glutes are working yeah because you need that yeah when you do that left you don't need your back working you need your glutes be yeah working. You need to for feel sure that. so there's a, there's a small exercise that they will feel like more uh, physical therapy okay. it's like very easy going yeah you might even think that's like for all people sure sure that's the hell yeah but i'm open but that's what again you're, mm -hmm. you're gonna make change that's how i, yeah. I learned too yeah i didn't jump into like doing this heavy stuff all of a sudden a build a relationship with the body because when I started doing this, I get hurt a lot. Like I'm giving you the sh the short the, the shortcut into doing this safely because I did it the wrong way and it cost me a lot, right? Yeah. I hurt my back. I hurt my hip. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid that. That's why I, I'm so cool to do this shit. So I jumped into heavy lifting, yeah. ego lifting. Then yeah. I get hurt. Then I stopped lifting for six months. Oh, then wow. I started lifting again, and I get hurt. Yeah. So I start working in physical therapy. Yeah. Then the physical therapist they showed me what's wrong with me, why I'm getting hurt yeah. so much. That's why I uh, wow. I work with people who like when you have injury. Here's how you deal with that. Yeah. But if you have enough patience, right. Yeah, it's like, a it's a slow and steady like as, climb. As I said, like the goal is not to get two hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. To get big booty. Yeah. The goal is like get shit done for this week. Yeah. And then get this thing would take time. Okay. And I'm forty. I I train the people who are seventy years old. They they lifted two hundred pounds. The guy yeah. who who called me from Germany say, you did an amazing job. I never I never thought I'll be able to climb this. Wow. He said, and fifty years old when I was fifty, I could didn't do it. 
Now I'm 70. I'm doing this like running. Wow. He came to me with ankle replacement. Oh. And he said, you know, I used to live deadlift. I love it, but I just am here like to fix my uh, so I can walk. Yeah, yeah. He ended up walking, deadlifting 200 pounds more than his body weight. And when he went back to Germany, he did the the he he climbed the 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 small mountain he couldn't do on before. Damn. So he made the progress. Yeah. Even though he's 70 years old. So that's what I'm telling you. The feeling of you rushing, it's a good thing, but it can be like a sword with double edge. It can get you start so fast, so you get fall out so fast too. But it's the good thing, at least they get you started. But try to take it from the perspective that these things take time, yeah. and your body is an amazing machine. Yeah. If you treat it right. Okay, so that being said, uh, I want to do the program with you um, and then do a follow-up episode. Yeah, sure. Would that be cool? And yeah. then and then we can talk about other ventures as yeah. well. But to wrap this up, and you don't, you don't have to wear those if you want. I, I know oh, yeah? it's picking you up, yeah. Uh, you want to do the, the rapid stuff? Yeah. With here, with here? Yeah. Is this recording right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. There's so many beautiful things happening. Oh, yeah. I'm not... I, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll put together what I want to publish and then I'll send you the audio so you can review it. And if you decide that you don't like it or you want to change something or whatever, okay. then we could do that. But right. I'm going to edit whatever I need to out. Um, but you, you mentioned you wanted to talk about the program you offer yeah. and I wanted to let you get into that. So I, I, I have created this program originally like when this pandemic I started for my for the client I used to train at the gyms around the uh, Bay Area so since the gym was closed I created this program for them originally but I just there were like so many people reaching out on my uh, social media accounts uh, asking questions about how to work out at home so I created the whole program for free 90 days for free it's a, it's a home workout program you can do from your house uh, body weight you don't need any equipment if you have equipment you just Send me the list of your equipment. I will change the workout um, to suit your best your equipment with. And there is a kind of like forms are, or since this is online, I will need uh, some like uh, say like uh, assessment forms. So we fill out this assessment form, like answer some question. So I know exactly what works best for you. And uh, if my program doesn't work for you, I'll give you I'll give you at least like. Uh, a suggestion or advice what to do uh, with that but this is working for mostly especially people so so to make clear this is people who have like a metabolic syndrome diseases because this requires more assessment this requires like liability uh, uh, appearance from the doctor people will have like a, a kidney disease or something like I cannot I cannot give the give that program because they will need like a doctor uh, clear, especially with the heart problem and anything like that. If you don't have any of the metabolic syndrome diseases and you just have a bad knee, bad shoulder, uh, and you want to jump in, you're welcome. 90 days for free. And you can always, like, because I do the, the nutrition coaching aside, so you can always ask for nutrition coaching and we can do a free uh, consultation for that too. Um, to see if you want to jump into one of my nutrition, uh, nutrition programs or you know we just want some information my nutrition coaching is basically basically like it's not it's mostly like habits i don't give meal plan i'm not like a fan of like giving meal plan it's like a mostly habits or the very most it's like a hand portion plans it means like i don't give you a list of food you go to the grocery to get i give you how to measure protein uh, carbs and fat using your hand that's it. Nice. I give you the right, the right amounts for that. So, uh, yeah. So that that would be like separate. So I'll give you the the uh, uh, as I said, as I mentioned in the podcast, the it's better to start with exercise, right? Yeah. You start with exercise, so you will get better sleep. You lower your uh, pain, and then eventually you will, you will feel hopefully you will feel like I need to feel my body right. You will get that. It's like homeostasis. You cannot fight biology. Your body will give you signals that, hey, man, you're doing 
a good good workout but come on you can give me that crap anymore like yeah. give me something i can it can improve my uh, performance with these sites you will feel that i don't yeah. have to tell you when but it's up to you yeah it's like you just listen tune into your body yeah uh, build a relationship of like clear communication because no one can teach you anything except for yourself like you will look I might have experience with exercise, I know what works, but I cannot tell you how your nutrition, you have to address it to get to where you want to be. Because yeah. that's your choice and that's your decision. Yeah. Right? Very practical. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, it's 90 days, reach out on my uh, email, my Instagram account or on Facebook. Um, just, you know, like, you can reach out like, through my uh, email or you can send me a DM. Uh, wherever you want to reach, reach me out or if you don't have those things you can uh, I'm putting out there my number you can just text me and I will send you a link to, uh, to uh, uh, sign up excellent and uh, I'll, I'll do that for you in the uh, intro of this episode I'll I'll go ahead and lay out you know where they can find you and and all those things and then if if you're all right with it I'll take a a picture that may be already published or maybe you want to send me a picture you want yeah. me to put because it's just going to be the thumbnail of of the podcast episode yeah. and I, I am only going to push this so much I know that I have a base audience it, and I don't know how many it is I don't think it's a large number at all however m- my attempt at mitigating my exposure to social media has a lot to do with what my ideas about marketing and and perhaps I haven't learned enough yet to find a different solution but for right now I will publish these things I will do at least the basic marketing of it and I I aim to create you know a a material that is naturally got its own trajectory I don't aim to ask anybody for what they're not naturally willing to give and that's you know foremost their their attention to this podcast so i just think it's important for you to know that that my my motive is not to become some corporation or to grow exponentially to that point however if growth naturally occurs i'm gonna find the opportunities that you know, it's, it's good that you mentioned that because my goal for me, myself, yeah. if I can get you personally yeah. in this program, that's my ultimate goal. Yeah. Like, yeah, good. This is the whole thing. Yeah. Like if I can get one person, right, she's closest to me, and they put them into this program and they take action, yeah, and makes them better versions of that's, that's the ultimate goal for me. I, I don't want one million subscribers right. or yeah. like one million, uh, People, I just, I just reach in to change one at a time. Yeah. And I, yeah. I don't do like the mass shooting thing. Yeah. Uh, everyone is welcome. Yeah. But for me, it would be like getting you in a victory. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Thank you so much, You're Zachy. Welcome. I appreciate this. Man. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Just do